So, I have a title of a topic, Tangent Planes and Normal Lines, but let me just say we're just continuing where we've left off studying the gradient. This isn't going to be sort of a brand new topic, but more of putting some pieces together that we already know about and creating something we haven't done before with those same and old pieces. So let's suppose we have a function with three variables that's equal to a constant. Now we just learned that if there's three variables equal to a constant we could call that a level surface something that's in three dimensions and as an example of that let's just see this one z minus x sine y equal to 1. So here is a three variable function that would be g equal to some constant. So in case you missed it when I said it, this is just a constant. Now we definitely don't know what this graph looks like. I mean, it is, it's beyond our scope to know what this surface would look like. Although with the experience, you might be able to start to recognize it and pull it out of a lineup of several choices if you had them. But let me just add one more little detail to here that I'm going to give you a point on this graph, this surface, just one point. I claim that the point 4 pi over 6 and 3 is on this surface. If x is 4, and y is pi over 6, and z is 3, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, half of 4 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. So it's a point on that surface. We really don't know much else about the surface. But we recently learned that if we use the gradient, the gradient of g, which would be a vector built up of the partial derivatives, that would be equal to some vector vector that is normal to this surface. So what would that look like, the gradient of g for this problem? Um, if x is the variable, that's going to be 0 minus, I guess it's minus sine y, okay? And if y is the variable, that's going to be 0, derivative sine is cosine, that would be minus x cosine y. And if z is the variable, I'm just going to get 1. So, if I calculate then the gradient at this given point, and this point has coordinates 4, pi over 6, and 3. Let's see, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. I'm going to get negative 1 half. Um, x is 4. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 divided by 2. Z components 1. Negative 1 half negative 2 root 3, 1. That vector is normal to the surface at this point. So, without having any visual, 
I could write the equation of a tangent plane, a plane that just touches the surface at that one point of intersection there, the tangent plane, and let's see here, I've got my normal vector, so this is going to be my normal vector, um, negative one half, x minus, I need an x coordinate is four, minus two root three, y minus, I need a y coordinate, that's pi over 6, and z component of the vector is 1, and I need a z coordinate, z minus 3, and the whole thing equals 0. This would be the plane that is tangent to this 3D surface, which we have no idea what it looks like. I could also write the parametric equations of the normal line which basically uses the same information but displays it in a x equals y equals z equals set of parametric equations. Um, I've got coordinates 4 pi over 6 and 3 and I have a normal vector minus one half t minus two root three t plus one t. Now you may not be asked to write both of these for every given function, but this is kind of an exercise that reminds me of something from our first course in calculus. Now you hang on a second, we're going to transition to the 3D graph and I'll give you a quick little look at the tangent plane on this crazy surface. So hold on. So here is that graph. I rewrote it so it's in the form of z equals because uh, even this software has some algebraic limits on how complicated a function you can enter in. It does pretty well if you can write it as z equals. It does not do as well if you try to uh, leave it as what would be called implicit form, the version I gave you before. There's the point. Um, it's a little hard to see there, but there's the point is definitely on the surface right here. There is that point. Um, there's some interesting features of this graph. If I get just right here, I can see that z is equal to 1 sometimes. Z would be 1 if uh, one of these two terms is 0. So sine of pi, sine of 2 pi, sine of 3 pi, sine of 4 pi, or if x is 0, it would kind of line up. This looks like some sort of a, a giant x or a double absolute value graph. That's kind of interesting. Let's see, you can kind of see sine hiding in here. Uh, so there are some interesting features, but basically I'm just showing it to you because I can and I want you to sort of appreciate what's happening. Now, remember what we did, we calculated the normal vector at this point so we could uh, write the equation of the tangent plane. So allow me. Here is the plane, as you might be able to see the algebra here. And if I put the surface there, it's not super clear, but you can kind of see that the plane is definitely, we'll call it tangent to the surface at this point. If you continue, the plane will eventually hit the graph again somewhere else, which happens with complicated curves and surfaces. So sure enough, that plane is indeed tangent to the surface. Okay? Stick around. I'll show you one more algebraic example that I want my own students to be comfortable with.